Hey guys, Richard Holdner here and welcome to the channel. We have our Gen 7 8.1 liter big block up on the dyno without GM trying to torque manage the thing. How much power do they actually make and how much power are headers worth? In this video, we're finally going to take a look at the other guy's big block Chevy. Of course, I'm talking about the Gen 7 8.1 liter, kind of a hybrid between the big block and the LS. In this video, we're going to run the thing naturally aspirated in stock trim with stock exhaust manifolds. Then we're going to run our big dyno headers. Then we're going to run a set of slightly smaller dyno headers. Then we're going to run some collector extensions. And then finally, an air intake. So how much power does this big block Gen 7 496 8.1 liter actually make? Okay guys, let's jump right in. We have our 8.1 liter 496 inch Gen 7 big block Chevy. Finally up on the dyno and making some pulls, which is awesome. Big shout out to Amos Garcia for supplying the motor, which was just fantastic. And for Darren Goodman at uh, Goodman Boat Transport for coming by on his way across the country and picking up the motor from Amos and actually delivering it to West Tech. Because I got it, the, the we met there um, at night, and then the next day, actually, the thing was up on the dyno and, and actually getting ready to start. So that was awesome. Thanks. Big shout out to both of those guys. So all this testing that we've done and all the subsequent testing we're going to do, which is going to be a lot, um, including you guys will see stuff on the headers and everything, and we also ran it with a turbo and all kinds of stuff we got you know we want to do ported heads and cams and all kinds of intake manifold testing coming up and all that's possible really because of those two guys because the viewers out there which is awesome so we got this 8.1 liter up on the dyno and for those of you that are watching the video that are not familiar with the 8.1 it's the gen 7 version of the big block and actually there were a lot of changes to the gen 7 version compared to the gen 6 gen 5 and mark 4 the original big block chevy the gen 7 is completely different it's 496 inches which is easy to do with a conventional gen 6 5 or mark 4 big block chevy but it's different it's much more like a hybrid between the big block the conventional big block and the LS motor. So it, the things that it have that make it look like an LS is the port design is much like an LS. It's a symmetrical port. They're um, long and kind of like a, if you look at them, you would think that they're kind of like a rectangular or a uh, cathedral port LS motor. They have a long runner crossover uh, EFI intake manifold that's an awful lot like an LS. They use coil packs. They share the LS firing order. They also use the same LS trigger wheel. We can use the, in fact, we use an LS harness on this 8.1 from our Holly HP to run this motor on the dyno. All we had to do, Ish just had to switch two of the pins. We ran this as a batch fire. So he just switched two of the pins on the crank sensor. We could also run uh, the cam sensor on it and that would be not a problem. Um, this has a, a big block Chevy style camshaft although the firing order is different but the gen 6 camshaft interchanges with this you'll just have to change the firing order but hydraulic roller uh, camshaft hydraulic roller lifters uh, gen 6 stuff is exactly like that the rocker arms interchange so there are a few things that interchange with the big block and then a few are things that are like the ls so it's kind of a hybrid between these two also you know bigger in displacement so naturally it's going to make more torque than the gen 6 stuff than the gen 6 454 and i have a video on that coming up comparing those two as that they were run on the dyno so that should be good stuff but let's jump right in and what we're going to do now is get this thing up and running run it on the engine dyno and then we're going to run a couple of different headers and then also uh air intakes and extensions and things on so i'll show you what's going on and what you guys can expect if you actually ran these things and gm let you have all of the power that's there without torque limiting these things which is very common in the factory fuel injection so when we put this thing up on the dyno we ran it with an electric water pump a mazir electric water pump again standard big block chevy stuff we ran it with a set of stock 
uh, cast iron exhaust manifolds Gen 7, and the flange that they end in is like an LS. So we ran our LS, uh, our, our stock exhaust <laughs> extensions, which are two and a half inch uh, exhaust, no mufflers or anything after that run in this manner with optimum tune, which means 29 to 30 degrees of timing, and the air fuel was at 12.7 or 12.8, and it didn't make any power at 13 to 1. It wasn't real receptive to air fuel, but run in this manner with an open throttle body. We used a Gen 6 throttle body because the Gen 7 comes with a drive-by-wire throttle body. We used a Gen 6 manual cable throttle body on it. Run in this manner with the stock exhaust manifolds, this 8.1 liter produced a whopping 412 horsepower, 411.9, and 544.7 foot-pounds of torque. So we'll call that 545 foot-pounds. You can see, very torquey, this thing, even down below, even, even at 1800 RPM, was near 500 foot-pounds of torque. It was checking in at 490 something, uh, dipped down a little bit to 487. So figure between 485 and 490 foot pounds, even down at 1800 RPM. Lots of torque, um, which is, and, and it made peak torque at 3600 RPM, made peak power at 4300 RPM. So not a high winder, but plenty of torque. Now let's check out and see what happens when we installed some headers. Okay, guys, we thanked all the people involved with getting us the motor. So now let's take a look at some actual dyno testing that we did. We ran the motor naturally aspirated with our stock exhaust manifolds on there and the two and a half inch uh, extensions on the manifolds, and it made 412 horsepower and, four, and 545 foot pounds of torque. But here's what happened when we installed uh, long tube headers that we typically run. We have a set that we run that we put on all the big blocks that we run on the dyno. Um, sometimes we'll run a dedicated set of headers for a chassis or something if they're very if the engine is very specific for a chassis but a lot of times we throw these on because they allow ample clearance for plug wires and things and they're easy easy to install for the dyno we're just usually trying to make sure that the motor is happy and alive and firing on eight, eight cylinders and you know not leaking and stuff so here's what happened we put a set of long tube headers on this combination and you could see it didn't pick up a ton of power on this otherwise stock motor. And that's not unusual. I mean, we did see some. So we went from uh, 411 or 12 up to 424, 423.6. And torque increased up to 554 foot-pounds. Um, not huge gains. I was expecting actually a little bit more down low. But here's the interesting thing is these headers, if we take a look at how big they are, now we run a set of headers that we can run on almost any kind of motor. And since at West Tech, they often run big blocks that are, you know, four digit stuff NA. So it takes a fairly good size header to run that. But these headers were two and a quarter inch primaries and they have a four inch collector. And then we had a four inch collector extension on those, which, which helps improve the torque down low. Um, so we just don't run an open header. But I know that everybody would be thinking, hey, look, with this 8.1, it's a, it's a stock motor. It, it's not going to want a big header like that. It's going to want something much smaller. So here's the question for you guys before I show you the dyno results. We're going to run a smaller header on this. We're going to run a two inch header with a three and a half inch collector. So we're going down on both of them. Is that, is that header, is that smaller header on this very mild application going to make more power? So that's the question. Go ahead and make a comment and let me know before we show you. But here is the results on the smaller header. Okay. <laughs> The smaller header actually did make a tiny bit more torque uh, here at 3,400 or so. It made 555. So from a peak standpoint, really not too much there. In fact, through the whole curve, 
you see a little bit down low, maybe at 2,500, but not a ton. And in fact, below that, the bigger header may have made one or two more foot pounds more. So in looking at these curves, even between a fairly sizable change in header from a two and a quarter inch header to a two inch header and a, a four inch collector versus a three and a half inch collector, both of them with the same length extensions on them, you see really almost no difference in power on this otherwise stock combination. So now let's check out one more test that I ran. We ran some longer collector extensions to see if we could add even more low speed power. And I also added a, uh, a three and a half inch air intake system again to see if we had any effect on power. The final test we ran on the 8.1 liter Gen 7 Big Block Chevy was running extensions on the headers to find out if we could pick up any power because what you want to do is try to simulate the full length exhaust even when though we didn't see much of a difference between the bigger header and the smaller header. Let's find out we have the smaller header on here now, a two inch header and a three and a half inch collector and then we do have an extension on it but what we wanted to do is add another extension beyond that and see if we can pick up a little bit more power. So here Here's what happened when we added our extension. We did see a little bit of a change here between 2200 and three, basically 3000 or 3100 RPM. So a little bit, not very much, nothing way down low and really nothing out at the top. Um, so if you have, if you had long tube headers, more often than not, you'd have a full exhaust on there. So you'd see a little bit more low speed power from having basically collector extensions or the full exhaust. So obviously you're already going to have that. So that's definitely the way to go. The interesting thing is that when I ran um, the final test, which was to put this air intake, I'll show you a picture of it here. We just made a three and a half inch tube, attach that with a radius air entry, and then attach that onto the throttle body to simulate an air intake, which is what you'd have if you have it in the engine bay. Um, but we actually saw it kind of negate the power gain that we got from the extension on the exhaust, which I thought was interesting. I'd like to do more testing on this and, and run the various combinations of these things and see if we can and find some sort of optimized combination to get more low speed power. And I'd like to try actually an even smaller set of headers, although we didn't see much going from the big header to the, what is still a fairly good size header. And I don't know what would happen if we went down to an inch and seven eighths or an inch and three quarter header, and then uh, a, a normal like three inch um, collector with, you know, a full exhaust on there. We might see some different stuff. So there's more testing to be had on our naturally aspirated deal, but this was a good start and it shows that these 8.1 liters produce a massive torque and plenty of horsepower. Now the thing is, what happens when we add some boost? Okay guys, what do we learn from our 8.1 liter 496 Gen 6 big block Chevy adventure? Our first one up on the dyno here in part one. We learned the following thing. That motor being as big as it is and having a very good cross runner intake manifold design, the heads seem to work fairly well. Obviously it has a fairly mild cam timing in it, but it's big enough to make lots and lots of torque, which it excels at. That's why they use it in all of these full size vehicle applications. And obviously it does very well. In fact, it does so well that in a lot of cases, GM detunes them or torque manages them so that they aren't given all of the torque that they're capable of. But once we unleash all that on the engine dyno like that we did, they run very well. Obviously also, as we saw in the video, they don't respond greatly in stock trim to the headers, at least to the headers that we ran on them, both sets, the, the bigger and the smaller version. And then the collector extension showed maybe a little bit there. The air intake showed almost nothing. So maybe we need to get one in the vehicle and run some tests on the chassis die to find out how well they do actually in the vehicle. But what we really need to do now is focus on things that we know are going to make power. We need to run some camshafts. We need to run some intake test, but part two coming up in part two is boost. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More 8.1 and lots of other testing coming up.